Walking is a series of falling and catching yourself. The only way to walk is to fall. It's not a bug, it's a feature. You are falling, you just fall and catch yourself, fall and catch yourself, fall and catch yourself, yeah. This is our weekly Monday Tanya class. It's been going on for years. I think probably five, six years with different, yeah? Okay, with different versions of it. We've gone through Tanya different ways and different styles. We just recently, a few months ago, finished going through the 53 chapters of volume one of Tanya. And then over the past few months, we studied some other Tanya related stuff during this time slot. Today, with Hashem's help, we are going to start the study of volume two of Tanya, known as Shad HaYichud Veha the gate of unity and faith. We did this a few years ago. Who was here a few years ago? Okay, so here's what I want to tell you. You, yeah, I'm going to say it very clearly. I do not shy away from these things. I'm going to say the truth. Last time we learned this, we had a wonderful, devoted group of regulars. I think the class was bursting at the seams, and there were a lot of people coming, and they were very into it. And we finished the 53 chapters of Tanya, of Volume 1 of Tanya. And then we started Shari Yichad Vamuna, which is actually only 12 chapters. Well, an introduction plus 12 chapters, much shorter. And everybody ran away. <laughs> they all ran away. And that's okay. Because, first of all, there's turnover in any class. And at this point, I think 90% of you were not there when that happened anyway. Okay? So... Here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, different strokes for different folks, right? Okay. Shariyechad ve'amunah is a different style than Lukut Yamorim Chelek Aleph. This volume of Tanya is much more focused on the mechanics of cosmology. In fact, that, that's the... F- that is the focus. That's what it's about. It's about cosmology. What's cosmology? It's a fancy word. What does it mean? What? No, I don't mean like astronomy. No, no. The origins of existence. The origins of created existence. So we're studying where the world comes from. And don't tell me, oh, it says Bereshit Bar Elikim. I know that. In the beginning, God created. We're trying to understand how it works. Why? Oh, well, that's a good question. Why? And that's the question that is answered in the preface. The entire preface is as long as a chapter, and it's answering the question, why are we learning this? Why? Okay. So, if you want to give away the punchline, okay, all right, yes. (laughs) It will, not just all, also love, that when we learn this stuff, it helps us to have greater awe and love of Hashem. You know, in the first volume of Tanya, it kept kept on saying that you got to think about Hashem, you got to think about Hashem, you got to think about Hashem. But it didn't explain that deeply, well, think about Hashem. Hashem is beyond. Hashem is infinite. Hashem, you can't grasp Hashem. So what am I, what, what is it precisely I'm thinking about? So in this volume, it's going to give us what to think about. It's going to allow us to understand Hashem's oneness and what is the nature of His existence, what is the nature of created existence. And this is not just because it's interesting or we have some type of uh, academic purposes for learning about this subject matter, but as mentioned, this is for the purposes of instilling awe and love of Hashem in our minds and hearts. Okay, so we're going to learn the Hakdama, the preface today. Like I said, it's as long as a chapter. If you have a Tanya, just open to the second volume. Hanikra B'Shem Chinuch Cotton. It is called Chinuch Cotton, the education of the child. What's called 
Chinuch Gotten. The preface, not the book. The book is called Shari Yechud Ve'amunah. But the preface of the book, Shari Yechud Ve'amunah, has its own title. And it's called Chinuch Gotten, The Education of the Child. It's not about the education of the child. Why is it called the education of the child? You'll tell me. Milukat mi pisofrim kadeshe alyain nishmasam eden. Compiled from books and teachers whose souls are in paradise. This is similar to what it says on the Sharblat on the title page of the first volume of Tanya, where he also says that. Not only says on the, on the title page that it's malukat, but that's part of the title, lakute amodim. That means compilation. The Al Rebbe compiled this. He's not the first one to come up with these ideas. He just systemized it and made it a coherent ideology. But these concepts are all from his predecessors. Mayusud, based upon, you remember how. The first volume of Tanya was also, it says, it was Miyusad, it was based on a Pasuk. Remember which verse, by the way, just for fun? Just so you can show off. Very good. Okay. This volume of Tanya is Miyusad. Al Shel Krishma. It is based on the first paragraph of Shema. And as we're going to explain later, not now, but much later, Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu, Hashem Echad, is Yichud Eloh. And Baruch Shem Kaved Malchus Eloh Elohim is Yichud Etato. What's Yichud Eloh, Yichud Etato? I'll translate, those are Aramaic words. Higher unity and lower unity. What is higher unity and lower unity? We'll find out. Chanoich Lenar Alpi Darkai Educate the child according to his way, even when he gets old, he will not depart from it. It's a famous verse. Where is it from? Mishlei. Mishle. Who wrote Mishlei? Shlomo Yeah, very good. And the literal meaning is educate a child according to his way, and even when he grows old, he will not depart from it. Okay, fine. Hine. From the fact that it says, according to his way, the child's way. It is not the objectively true way. It imp- the verse itself implies it's not the way, it's a way. Which way? This kid's way, and that's why you're using that particular way with that particular kid. V'imkain, but if so, if that is the case, my malyosa shagam ki yazkin lo yosem imena. What's the gvald? Why? What's the what's to celebrate about the fact that the verse goes on to say, and even when he gets old, he will not depart from it. Well, if it's an adapted version, <laughs> maybe I would like him to outgrow it. Maybe this is just the training wheels. What we're doing for now to get started. Why does the verse tell me he'll never get out of this? He'll never get out of training wheels. He'll always have to wear a pull-up at bedtime. That was a good marshal. I just, I just thought of that. I just thought of that. Achine, however, mudazais. This is known. Kishor sheavedes Hashem v'yisay deiseho hindechi lurchimu. The source or the root of serving Hashem and its foundation is dechilu rechimu. Those are Aramaic words. Awe and love. It's all about awe and love. And let's break it down. Hayira awe sheirish v'yesayid l'sumera is the root and the foundation of go away from evil. All the don'ts. V'ava and love l'va'ase toiv is the, the root and the foundation of all the do's. By the way, please show off your incredible teacher that taught you Tanya. Which chapter in Tanya, in the 53 chapters, does it say at the beginning of the chapter, 
that the source of all positive commandments is love and the source of all negative commandments is awe. Do you remember? Just say a number, 1 through 53. Thank you for saying a number. It's totally off, but thank you for saying a number. No one has even... One, oh. 43? Very close. What? No, what? No, now you're getting away. 41. 41. Okay. And you're going to see that this introduction to the second volume of Tanya, in a way, is almost like a recap of the first volume of Tanya. I'll, I'll show you. I'll point it out to you. Or maybe better yet, you'll point it out to me. Okay. And love is the foundation of do good, meaning all of the positive commandments, biblical and rabbinic. As they will be explained, or as it will be explained in their place. Hold on. This was an illusion or a recap. Or a reference to where, what, what other source? I just said it. This was reference, referencing a chapter of Tanya. Which one? 41, 41. 41. okay. Kamei As it will, future tense. You know, the past, present, and future walked into a bar. It was tense. <laughs> Why does it say future tense? It will be explained. Was this written before the first volume? Well, that's a very logical deduction. I want to tell you something. That originally, Shari Yuchad Ve'amunah was meant to be volume one of Tanya. What do I mean it was meant to be? The Alter Rebbe had intended it that way. For reasons known to the Alter Rebbe, when the book was handed in for publication. Remember, Tanya existed as pamphlets. Each chapter was its own pamphlet for many years. When the Alter Rebbe handed in the book for publication, he switched it. And he made the 53 chapters, volume 1, and he made the Shari Yichad Vemunah, 12 chapters, volume 2. But I want to tell you something. If you learn both volumes, you can definitely see why somebody might do the opposite and do it the way it was originally set up. And, 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 I'll, and I'll tell you why. To me, I mean, this is just my logic. But the first 53 chapters of Tanya is all about how I should work on my relationship with Hashem. And a lot of it's like about personal growth, which is why it's so attractive to people because in 2024, people are into like self-help and personal growth. and it, 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 it dovetails with a lot of the language people already have in those realms. So that's, that's why, by the way, I think everyone ran away after we finished Likut Yamur and Chelek Aleph. But, because they were like, I, I, want, I want to talk about my personal growth. I don't want to talk about God. But volume, volume two is all about God. So it makes sense to me that before you would speak about, okay, volume one, as we have it, is all about how I work on my relationship with God. Yeah, but who's God? I have to wait till volume two to find out who's God. So it makes a lot of sense. First, teach me who's God. And then teach me how to work on my relationship with God. Now, in the end, that's not what the Alter Rebbe did, um, which is interesting to me. It's kind of like, start working now, and I'll give you more information later. But it makes a lot of sense to first have the information from Shari Yechud Vamuna before you do the Avayda of Lukut Yamorim. Okay. So that's just an interesting little thing. It says Kameshi Yisbar, and it was never changed. To, as it was explained, it still says, as it will be explained. Um, Chinuch includes not only prohibitions, but also positive commandments, meaning to say, we just established that you need love to do the positive commandments, so if you're being mechanach a child, it's not enough to teach him Yira, you also have to teach him Ava, because he's not only learning how to not do what he shouldn't do, he's learning how to do, do what he should do. Vihine. Okay. So we established that you need to teach the child love and awe. 
Now, I'm just going to spoil this here because it'll probably take many readings before it became apparent to you. But this is not talking about children. I mean, it is, but it isn't. Well, it actually made it clear it's not talking about children because it says Gamki Yazkin, even when he becomes old. We're not really talking about kids right now. We're talking about us. That we need to learn all of God and love of God. Okay. And that there's a modified way of doing that that is called Darkoi. And it is not the, what did he call it, Emes La Mitoi? Vihinet. Ba'avaksiv besef Parshas Ekev. Now, Regarding love of God, it says in the end of Parshas Ekev, Asher enechi metava eschem la seisa la aves Hashem l'gamer, that I'm commanding you to do to love Hashem. V'tzorach l'hoven. Eich shayech lo shenasiya gabi ava shebalev. Why does he say to do it when he's talking about an emotion, when he's talking about love that's in the heart? Asiya is an action. Ava is a feeling. Aho inyin hu, however the answer is. De yesh shne mine avas Hashem. There are two types of love of Hashem. Okay, let's hear about it. Hoachas, one type. He klais hanafesh betiva al bayra. It is the expiring of the soul, the instinctive, natural expiring of the soul. Toward its maker. Kasher tis gaber nefesh hasiklis ala chemer vashbileu visachnieu tachteho. When the nefesh hasiklis, the intellectual soul, predominates over the substance, meaning the body, and lowers it and forces it underneath its dominion, as I then tislahev tislait. It will take light, it will fire up, it will be ignited with fire, meaning fiery love that rises up like a flame on its own accord. And then it rejoices in Hashem, its maker. And it experiences profound delight in Hashem. And those who merit to experience such an Ahava Rabba, such an abundant love, they are the ones who are called Tzadikim. Now, you learned the Kutimon Echelik Aleph, so you know we don't throw around that word Tzadikim. Can you take me to the airport? Sure, you're a Tzadik. No. Yeah. That's a colloquial <laughs> use of the term. So we know what a tzaddik is from Lukut Yemonim Chelek Aleph. You're talking about somebody who is extremely <laughs> unusual, who has no Yetzirah, and um, in fact, from what we know in chapter 10 of Lukut Yemonim uh, Chelek Aleph, this description of this pleasure, this tainug, Sounds even more like the higher level of the tzaddik. Because remember in chapter 10 of Lukut Yomarim, it said that what's the difference between the tzaddik gomer and tzaddik sheina gomer? It's the extent of uh, pleasure that they have in Hashem. So, and, and we also learned about this idea that this is a, um, we, we, we call it avarabah. We also called it ava betainugim. And we also mentioned that it's a gift, it's a matana milmaila for somebody who's already achieved complete Yira Hashem. So this level that we just described, this level of Avas Hashem that we just described, based on what you know, if you learn Lukutimonim Chelek Aleph with me, do you think that this is going to tell us how to do that? No. Why is it not going to tell us how to do that? It's a gift. It's unattainable. It's for tzaddikim. Remember, even Shah Yuchid Vamuna is part of Sefer Shalbaninim. I mean, the whole thing is called Sefer Shalbaninim. So, no, we're not going to learn about that love. We're going to learn that it exists, 
We're not going to learn how to do it. Is that one of the FBOs, or it's not enough? Okay, we're, 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 we'll, get to, we'll get to that question. Okay, good, good. I'm glad you remember the context. So what's with that ASEA language? Okay, we'll get to that. All right. Hi. I'm sorry for interrupting the class. I will get you back to this other guy in a minute. I know he's fascinating and you're enthralled and you want to hear the rest of the class. Before I do, just do me one favor. Do yourself a favor. Do others a favor. If you made it this far, that means you are the kind of person that this content speaks to. So let the algorithm know that. It's very smart. It understands who you are. Yeah, it's spooky. Um, like, subscribe, comment. Really, seriously. Like, subscribe, comment comment. It will help get this content to other people who will also enjoy it. Thank you. Like, subscribe, comment. So he says, uh, that's one type of love. And he goes on and explains Kedichsev, like it says, Simchut tzadikim ba'ashem. Tzadikim rejoice in Hashem. Ach lo'i kol adam zeich lezeh. Not everybody is zeich, not everybody merits that. You have to really refine your body. You need to learn a lot of Torah and do a lot of mitzvahs. You have to go to a level higher than nefesh and ruach, a level called neshama. It's interesting because in the first chalik of Tanya, and even in this chalik of Tanya, we don't really so much go technically into the differences between nefesh, ruch, and neshama. But over here, he says, it's a particular level, and not everybody attains that level. And in Reish's Chochma, he writes more about it. Okay. So that's one type of love. And doesn't sound very attainable. doesn't sound like that's on the agenda. All right. Vahashenis. And the second, second what? Type of love. Second type of love. He, Ahava Shekol Adam, Yuchulagiya is a love that anyone can reach. Kishi Yisbain and Hatev Ba'umka if he'll meditate <coughs> with the depths of his heart. Bidvarim Hamaoidim Masoava La Shemba Lev Kolisro, on subjects that arouse the Jewish heart to love of Hashem. So the second type of love is attainable by everyone, provided that, what? Do the work. Do the work. What's the work? Meditation. 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 On what? Yeah. He doesn't really spell it out. He says, subject matter about Hashem that will bring you. To, he doesn't really say what it is in detail, but he just says, there are certain things you can think about. And if you think about it deeply, it will arouse the love. It's probably different for everyone. Maybe it's different for everybody. Maybe. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. find out. Hain derech klal. Now he sort of breaks it down, what these subject matters are that you could meditate on. In a general way, what does he mean a general way? We're going to see. Ki hu chayeno mamish. You can think about Hashem is mamish, our life. Ki hu chayeno. He's, he's our life. Tanya, students, does that sound famil familiar to you, this meditation you think about how Hashem is your life and it brings you to love of Hashem. It's one of the meditations. Do you remember the number, chapter? <laughs> the first digit of the number? Four is the first digit. It's in the 40s. You are better than 90% of the people in yeshiva, if you know that. Yeah. You're not better than them. Nobody's better than them, but your knowledge is better. Yeah. Uh, that's a different one. No, no, no. You think about Hashem as our life. We call it in Tanya Nafshi Avisicha Balaila. You remember that? We use that Pasuk? That you love Hashem because He is your life. You look at your notes and you let me know what the chapter is. Just like a person loves his life. I don't mean I love my life, like, oh, I have such a nice car. Meaning, you don't want to die. And if you don't know that, you haven't been challenged enough, and I don't wish it on you. Cain, Yahav, 
es Hashem. So to you love Hashem. Kasher yisbeinu v'yosim alibay ki Hashem hu nafshay o amitis v'chay of mamish. When you think about the fact, hey, you know, if you really think about it, Hashem is my life. So if I have this in, incredibly intense desire to be alive, so I should have an intense desire to be close to Hashem. Kamesha kozeb v'zayar al posik nafshi yivisicha v'gaymer. Like it says in the Zayhar on the posik. My soul, I yearn for you. Anyone found the chapter yet? Okay, so that's called derech klal. That's called a general meditation or subject matter. Vehein derech prat, and also a specific meditation. What does that mean? She kishi yovin v'yaskil b'gdulase shel melech malchem lochem ekadosh baruch derech. When you will understand the greatness of the King of all kings, the Holy One, blessed be He, in a specific way. When you start to, this is a very poetic sentence, when you start to grasp in your mind that which your mind cannot grasp, when you start to appreciate that which is beyond our ability to fathom. V'achakach, and then afterwards, Yisbeinen ba'avas Hashem hagdei lo v'nif You think about Hashem's great love of us. Is this sounding familiar? As a subject matter of meditation? Garbage heap, yeah, I like that you call it the garbage heap. What's the number? Yeah, I, yeah. 47. 47. So I'll take a little review of the chapters in the, in the 40s of the first volume of Tanya. Leire le Mitzrayim, he came down to Mitzrayim, Erva Sa'aretz, which is the lewdness of the land. Lehetzi nishmasenu mikura barzal, he took out our souls from the smelting pot, shehu hasitra achar rechmon which means a really nasty place. Lekorveinu elav, ladabkeinu b'shmei mamash, v'hu shmei echod, and then he brought us close to him in his name, and he and his name are one, which means he brought us close to him. The Hainu, that means to say, shere mamonu mitachlis hashiflu sfatuma. he lifted us up from the ultimate lowness, and impurity, letachlis hakdusha, to the ultimate holiness, gdulosa yisbarach she'ein lo katz v'tachlis, he brought us up to his holiness, which is endless. Azai then, if you think about this, kamayim ha'ponim el, ponim, like a face is reflected to a face, when you look in the water, the face looking back at you is the face that you're looking with. Familiar, right? It will arouse the heart of any intelligent person who thinks about this intelligently. And it will bring you to love Hashem with a powerful love. And to cleave to God with your heart and soul. As it will be explained at length in its proper place. Again, will be explained, was explained. It's referring to these chapters, as you mentioned, in, in the 40s of Lakuti Amarim, which was originally volume one. Okay, so we did like a little tour or recap of the chapters that teach us about what to meditate on. And that's what he's reviewing. He's saying that the second type of love is basically a love that is manufactured by meditating on these different things that you guys all know about because we studied it together. Brother Taub, why yeah. can't the first level of love, when we subjugate our Yisahara, why can't we access that love? Like, the first type of love? Yeah, it, he described He didn't it say it's a result of the work you do. He says the work that the human being does is the precondition or the prerequisite to it. It's not cause and effect. It's not like you push a button and you get a result. So he 
describes that that's the mechanism. So it's not the mechanism. Not. No, 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 no. So I, I'm glad that you're saying this. No, he does not say it's the mechanism. He says it's the prerequisite. He makes it very clear that this is something that happens to you after you've done all the other work. So, and, and, and it's, we, we, we've learned this already, the, the, the idea that the Ava Rabba or Ava Batanugim is not dependent on the Vaita Sa'adam. It's a metonym, a metonym il Milo, and, and you don't create it, you, you, you receive it. So that's, that's why, going back to our, what was our original question? Why the word Ava is connected to the word Asiya. So he didn't spell out the answer yet, but it should be a, clear to you. So the Asiya here, the activity, is the meditation work, okay? So the first type of Ava, indeed, is not going to um, come as a result of meditation. There's nothing you can do about it. There are things you need to do before it happens, but again, it's not a causation. But that sounds like it would happen organically. Like you meditate on the love of God, you organically... Whereas what he's saying about the second type of ava, you call it organically, yeah, I could, I could use that word, that it happens, that that is the natural outcome. Yeah, and that's what he's saying. If you do this meditation work, the natural outcome is to have these emotional experiences. Yeah, as opposed to the first type of love where <laughs> you could do, do all that work, but it's not up to you whether or not you can experience that level of love or that type of love. Okay, he says it clearly now. But is it possible, I mean, is it possible to get to that higher level of love at a later stage in your life? If you weren't born a sudden, could you... Could Hashem give you the gift? Okay, so that is a great question. Are we talking about either or? Or could one person experience both of these or either of these types of love? And perhaps what you're implying in your question is at different stages of their life. I want you to hold on to that question because that is actually the punchline of this whole chapter. It's exactly where we're headed. Okay. So hold on to that. Vehina inyan avazu rotsa mesha rabbeinu ala vashalom lita belev kol Yisrael be parsha va'ata Yisrael v'gamer. Be pasuk hein la Hashem alikach Hashemayim v'gamer. Rak ba'vesecha choshek v'gamer u'maltem v'gamer b'shiv nefesh v'gamer v'yohavta v'gamer. This love, this second type of love, is precisely what Mesha rabbeinu wanted to implant in the hearts of the Jewish people in the section that begins, and now, O Israel, when he says, and uh, the, the Altar of paraphrases snippets of these verses, but uh, to Hashem belongs the entire world, and yet he, had, uh, he chose to have a special relationship with your ancestors, and he has circumcised your hearts, and he uh, brought you down to Egypt as 70 souls, and then he took you out, and he brought you here, and he has loved you. And that's why Meishu Rabbeinu ends that by saying, this is the love that Hashem commands you to do. To do what? To think about this information. Shehi ava asuya balev. This is a love that is made in the heart. Look at the tag, and it says, made in Malaysia. No, China. No, made in the heart. Al Yedei, through what process? Habina Vahadas, applying your Bina and Das. Those are different sectors of the mind. Bidvarim hamaoirim eshoava, applying the Bina and Das to subject matters that naturally, I'll use your word, organically, um, cause one to feel love. Valzet siva kvar trilok, and regarding this, we, all, we were already commanded, and let these words that I command you today be on your heart. 
כדי שעל ידי זה טובי לאהבה אס השם, in order to come to love השם, כדי איסא בספרי, על פוסק זה, like the ספרי says on this פוסק, which basically the ספרי says, that what is the commandment, ואהבת אס השם על הכחו, the commandment to think about things that will cause you to love השם. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because, <laughs> and not only that, but he says right here that it's through Bina and Das, which are in the Mayach, which are in the brain. <sighs> That's a great question. So, you hear the question? Why does he say it's made in the heart? It's clearly made in the brain. It's done through meditation. It's a, it's a mental exercise. But isn't he saying, isn't he saying that the mind and the heart have to become one? Yes, yes, they're working together, correct, working yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit, it is a question, though, like, why does it say it's made in the heart? Say it's made in the brain and then it goes to the heart. It's a great question. Well, it is a two-level thing. No, no, no. It is. It is certainly a two-level thing. It is a two-level thing. It is a process. In fact, the beginning of chapter one, we're going to allude to the two levels by invoking the verse "V'yadaita ha'yim v'shevesa lavavacha." You should know today and place it upon your heart. There's an intellectual process and there's an, um, an emotional process, or I should say, there's an intellectual phase and an, and an emotional phase of a single process. Correct, and we know that, that, okay, that means something else. With all your heart, it means with both your Yitzhahara and your Yitzhahara. But here's the point. We know that the process in an, is, is, an, is an intellectual process. That's very clear. That's explicit right here. But the objective is to feel an emotion. And this is actually what, when, in the, when we started off, and I said, we're going to learn about God, we're going to learn cosmology, and you're like, Why? I'm like, okay, why? Because it's going to help you love Hashem better. So the whole point of this is the emotional outcome. We're not learning this information because it's cool. We're learning this because it creates love. Now, where is that love that gets created? In the heart. Where does the process begin? In the brain. But it has to finish in the heart, otherwise it's not the process. So it's a good question because they come together, they come together and then the, the culmination is in the heart, and the purpose is the heart. The goal. The goal. I, I feel like it's not fair that the tzaddikim get it for free. Like, let them do the work. I'm here okay. struggling. So first, okay, so you're complaining. I love that you're complaining that the tzaddikim, it's not fair, it's not fair. Okay. First of all, first of all, he says, first of all, he says explicitly, they did a lot of work. He just explains that the work isn't a one-to-one -one promise. It's not like do the work and then you'll get the result. You could do the work and not get the result. You can get do the work, and even if you do get the result, it's not because of your work. It's a gift. Right. That's first of all. Second of all, hold on tight, because we're, I already said, shelve this idea right now about whether or not possibly both these types of love are pertinent to one type of, to one person, meaning... Okay, just hold on and make room for the possibility that these two types of, lo of love are not mutually exclusive and we're not saying that there's one demographic who has one and one demographic who has the other. Yeah, I'm kind of open so to let's that. find out, yeah. Getting a Havarabo, which will motivate me to do the okay. work, well, to then do more, you know? Yeah, I hear that. That's my derech. That's your derech. Okay. <laughs> We're going to find out. Okay. We're going to find out what the darkai is. Okay. Vihine al ahavazu hashenis shayich lashen mitzvah v'tzivoy. 
Regarding this second kind of love, it is possible to use the word mitzvah and tzivoy, meaning it can be commanded. You cannot command somebody to have the first type of love because there's nothing they can do about it. They can't will themselves for it to happen. But the second type of love, you can command somebody because, as you mentioned, it's organic. You go do this, this will happen. Okay. That means, what is the commandment? The commandment is to put your heart and your mind on those matters that bring about that kind of love. But the first type of love, she shall have a soilamayelaho, which is like a flame that rises of its own accord. You cannot use the words mitzvah or tzivli regarding it because it's not something you can command somebody to do. And furthermore, it is a reward for the tzaddikim that they're given the ability to have a foretaste of the pleasure of the world to come, even in this world. Like it says about that next world, or that love that allows you to experience that next world, I've given my priests a love of a gift, or a gift of love, a love that is gift-like. Like it will be explained, and again, will be explained. Because right now he's at the time of writing, Shari Yechud Vemuna is Chelak Aleph. It sounds like a funny thing for God to even choose during the summer to get sick. Hashem chooses Neshamas for all types of things. He chooses Neshamas to have all different kinds of experiences in embodiment. We're not all the same. We don't all have the same challenges. But, like, what's driving that Russell? Is that like, Well, them? maybe it's something that's above any type of logic. Maybe it's, uh, you know, sometimes referred to even as a lottery. It just is what it is. Each person gets their destiny. But anyways, this is not really for us to... Is what? Does the neshama of a tzaddik always come back as a tzaddik? Gilgulim are complex, and any time you try to make rules about Gilgulim, they're wrong. Um, uh, r- rules are usually wrong, yeah, because then, then there's the exceptions. And then sometimes there's the exception that proves the rule, but then that sometimes there's more exceptions than rules, so it prov- proves the exception. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Know. But at any rate, we don't need we don't need to know any of this stuff because this is tzaddik stuff. We don't have to know about. It. Okay, shala namar. Oh, we said that. Achina yidu al yedim. Taima dekra my dechsev ki sheva yipel tzaddik vekam. However, it is known. There's a verse: the tzaddik will fall seven times and get up. Tzaddik will fall seven times and get up. Especially a person is called a walker and not a stander. What's that mean? A person is called a walker and not a stander. A malach is called an oimed. An angel is called a stander. In the, in the Navi, it, the, the, the Navi describes a vision of Malachim, Oimdim, standing. Great question. So, yeah, they go up and down, but here's the thing. It's set. It's on a track. It's like, it's like a, a theme park ride. You can't really, you know, Mr. Toad's ri- wild ride is not really dangerous. Okay? A Mahalach, a walker, is an Ashama. Why? Because an neshama risks it all. Yeah. Uh, if Adam passes, right? Yeah. So the neshama goes up. Yeah. But the neshama is also down. The the point of being a mahalach means that when it comes down, it loses something in order to gain something and go back higher. A malach 
can only move, even when it has an aliyah, within a track. A neshama can go to a new track, can jump tracks. Wait, so the neshama, okay. So but, the neshama was up, right? The neshama was up. Neshama then it went down. And then it went up, but it went higher up to a whole new track because it went down. So the point is, part of growth is Yerida. A Malach doesn't really have a even when a Malach has a Yerida, that's what I told you, Mr. Toad's wild ride is not really dangerous. You can't get hurt. It's on a track. It's on a track. Okay? But a, a Neshama experiences risk. Real Yerida. But it experiences real Aliyah, proportionate to that Yerida, or even greater. So here's the deal. When we say tzaddik v'kom, that a tzaddik will fall seven times but get back up, what we're saying is that the tzaddik's path will not be linear. Now, I'm not here to discuss tzaddikim. <coughs> I only want to discuss tzaddikim as much as as, as absolutely necessary. Because we're not here to become tzaddikim. But he just told me that a tzaddik's path in life is not absolutely linear. It's what you were alluding to in your question. That a tzaddik will have a yurida. Now what does it mean, a yurida? They'll stop putting on tefillin? No. He's doing it up there too anyway. Okay. 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 So listen. So listen. So follow. You have to go from level to level. You can't stay on one level forever. Now, if you can't stay on one level forever, that means there's an interim phase where you are destabilized and you are free-falling if you want growth. Walking is a series of falling. YouTube people, help me out here. You're my research team. I remember once... And now I could never find it. I could never find it. I, I thought there was an essay by Thoreau called Walking. And I, maybe I made this up, but I thought he said that walking is a series of falling and catching yourself. And I looked for it, and he didn't say that. So maybe I made it up, which somebody should tell Thoreau to add that. Okay. Um, walking is a series of falling and catching yourself. If you don't want to fall, don't walk. How do you trip somebody? Is you grab their back foot so they can't plant it in front of them and restabilize. Every step is a risk of falling. Every step you destabilize, what do you do? You, you do it so seamlessly you don't even think about it anymore. But every time you take a step, you shift your weight and you make yourself very unstable, and the only way that you advance and you move forward is to actually fall and catch yourself. But you're such an acrobat, you do it. When babies learn how to walk, they do fall, correct. The only way to, to walk is to fall. It's not a bug, it's a feature. You are falling, you just fall and catch yourself, fall and catch yourself, fall and catch yourself, yeah. Greg Saxon says walking is controlled falling. Greg who? Greg Faxon says that walking is controlled falling. Yes. Okay. Just staring. That's that's yeah. That's what I. That's what I'm saying. Well, who's Greg Faxon? <laughs> Who is he? I have no idea. GregFaxon.com. Oh, GregFaxon.com. So he stole it like all these dot coms. He must be like a business coach. He's a business coach. <laughs> is there a picture of him in a three-piece suit wearing a Bluetooth no, ear? Oh, that's right. This is 2024. They wear T-shirts. Business coaches wear T-shirts, right. Okay. All right. So listen. Walking is falling. It's not, oh, be careful. If you walk, you might fall. No, no, no. You will fall. It's just you catch yourself with each step so you don't fall on your face, which is exactly what he says here. Listen to this. Okay. We're almost done. He says... Um, um, Okay, 
Ubein madrega la madrega between each level terem shiagila madrega alienim and before you get to the higher level who be beginus nafilum madrega rishena you are in a state of free fall from the previous level ach yipoil la yutol ksiv you know what that means ki yipoil la yutol ki yipoil he will fall vla yutol he will not make a face plant he will fall. You need to fall in order to walk, but you won't make a face plant. You will do controlled falling, which is called walking. Ve'ena nikras nefila. It is not an actual fall. Ela lagabi medregase harashay nevalei lagabi shar kol adam chas v'shom. Not comparative to other people, comparative to himself. In other words, this tzaddik who is prog- progressing is falling. It doesn't mean that compared to other people, you look at him and be like, oh my gosh, you're on such a low spiritual level. That's not what it means. It means that he was doing something, and he was doing it consistently, and he became really, really unnatural at it, and then he gave it up and said, I want to go to a new level. But in order to go to the next level, he had to let go of what he had been doing. Now, even when he's free-falling, he's still from, he still loves Hashem and is in awe of Hashem and serves Hashem. But it, we're going to explain what it means here. He's not riding anymore on the momentum. He, he forfeits the momentum of the previous work in order to get situated on a whole new level. What are you going to say? You don't even have to say that. He's just walking on, an, on a flat plane. The point is... Well, the point of walking up a down escalator is if you're not walking, you're falling. Right, but that's a different falling. But why right. can't it be like the spheres that the lowest, the highest level is the lowest level of the next level? Yeah, that's also true. Okay, but listen. Listen, uh, well, let's just finish. Sha'afa <laughs> Pekin. Even when he's quote unquote falling, he's still on a very high level, higher than other people. How? How is he on a higher level while he's in his falling state? In other words, he masters a certain type of Avedas Hashem, and instead of just doing that for the rest of his life, he says, I'm going to now learn a whole new technique of Avedas Hashem on a whole new level. So when he's in his falling state, when he gives up the previous level, what's holding him in? What's keeping him in a good place if he's technically free-falling? He has a remnant of his previous level. And he can kind of ride out on those fumes. But its root, or its foundation is the love that he was taught or trained in in his youth before he came to the level of tzaddik okay there was a process before he was a tzaddik we're referring to it as his youth it doesn't have to literally mean he was a child. But relative in his development, there was his younger years and his current years. His younger years, what was he taught how to do? Love Hashem. Okay, how? Which method? The first type or the second type? Second. second type. How do you know the second type? Because well, First of all, because the first one can't even be taught. It's not a transferable skill. That's why so, it's called chesed nuraich. So, that's why it's called chesed nuraich. Why? Tell, that's your chiddush. Why? Yeah. Okay, explain it. Or is so just a. In your youth, as you're doing this work, you get this chesed. Oh, you get a certain freebie. Well, it's, it's a chesed from Hashem. It's a chesed from Hashem. Uh huh. But it's actually not a chesed from Hashem. No, you work you for it. Oh, 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 okay, so then it's the opposite of Nuraich. It comes in your advanced stage, not in your early stage. At any rate, here's the point. This tzaddik, before he had his Avarabah kick in, 
he was doing regular his bainanos like any regular person. He didn't have Ava that came milmaila as a matona, Ava Rabba, Ava Batanugim. He had regular, good old fashioned. He made his Ava the old fashioned way. He earned it. One smirk. Just one, in the whole room, I got one smirk on that. It's. John Houseman, Google it. Okay? He worked for it. What was the work that he did? Meditation. Meditation. Good. Okay. This is what it means even when he grows old. It means that even when he becomes a tzaddik and he has the avarabba gift, there will be times when he's between phases. Why is he between phases? Because he's moving, and when you're moving, sometimes you're in the interim. Not sometimes you fall, you always fall, yeah? So he's in the interim phase, but he can always fall back on the original training that if you want to love God, then meditate on what, it, what you need to meditate on in order to create those feelings. So what have we just said? We just said basically that, yes, even this tzaddik who has there will be times in his spiritual growth where he will have to go back to the regular stuff that we all do, which is simply think about these subjects in order to get yourself to manufacture a feeling. It's the safety net. It's the safety net. That will get you read them until something is safety net. It's a very secure safety net and it's higher. Now, l- l- let me ask you this. He doesn't say this explicitly, but if you're not a tzaddik and you don't have avarabah, so then, how does this apply to you? Well, it applies even more so. Because this is, this is what we do. This is our whole bread and butter. Okay. Meditation to create love in the heart. That's our bread and butter. Okay. Vihine. We're almost done. The beginning of things that arouse love of God and awe of God and the foundation of things that arouse love and awe of God, meaning, okay, I got to think about some stuff and feel love and awe of God. Okay, he says, but listen, the racious and the yesoid, like almost like the prerequisite that you need to even start thinking about God, he ho amona, ha tohoiro amona, is the faith, it's interesting, I need faith in order to think, I thought you think because you don't want to have to use your faith. Thinking and faith are like opposites. And what is emuna tohoidav and na'amona, pure and reliable faith? And what is the faith in? The yichud and achdus, the oneness and the oneness of Hashem. Okay, so let's unpack this real quick. Let, let's unpack this. Okay. I, I, give me two more minutes so we can finish. Okay. Let's unpack this. Faith and thinking are not mutually exclusive. Faith that is done instead of thinking is not faith, it's laziness. Faith is used properly where thinking no longer reaches. If you believe something that you could have understand through applying yourself, that's not faith. Faith is where you reach your personal limit, and that's where faith begins. So he says, listen, don't be lazy and say, oh, I believe. No, believe in what you can't understand, not which you chose not to even attempt to understand. So what we're doing here, we're raising the ceiling of intellect in order to have a more firm foundation of Amuna. faith, of Amunah. Very good. But we're so impressed by Amunah Pshuta. Yes, we love Amunah Pshuta. And yet, this whole book 
is about how to understand and how to meditate. And Muna Peshutta is beautiful. There's no book about how to have a Muna Peshutta. Because ultimately, Reva, ultimately, yeah. the ultimate basis of sin is intellectualism. Okay, let, let's, let, I, 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 I want to, okay. So, we're, you're, we're not going to understand the whole thing. But here's the deal. There is a certain amount that you can understand. And in order for your faith to be real, legitimate faith, you need to understand every bit that you're capable of understanding. I'll put it like this. Just like it is absurd to try to use intellect to experience that which can only be taken on faith, it is equally absurd to use faith to experience that which could have been understood through intellect. Mm-hmm. You call it ishtadlis. But this is what it means, amuna tahira. Pure faith, what does pure faith mean? Pure faith means faith, doesn't mean what you think it means. It doesn't mean amuna pshutta, it doesn't mean innocent. Amuna tahira here means don't misuse faith. Pure faith means faith that is used where faith is appropriate. Don't tell me I have faith that everything that it says in Chassidus is true. But I won't open the book because I already know it's true. No, that's a misuse of faith. Learn it, understand as much as you can understand, and then once your intellect fails, that's where your faith properly begins. And what should this faith be in, and therefore what should this understanding be in? Yechude v'achdusei. Yichude v'achdusei. What is it? What's the difference? Yichud, achdus. Okay. Achdus Hashem means that there is nothing but Hashem. That the existence of creation is not a secondary existence to Hashem's existence. Achdus Hashem means there is only one existence. There's no existence apart from or outside of God. Yichud Hashem means that within Hashem Himself, He is simple oneness and not a composite. He's not made of parts. So this book is going to break it down for us and explain to us how Yichud and Achdus Hashem work so that we can start our faith at a higher level. It is amazing that you made it all the way to the end. That means you are really, really the target audience. So again, please let the algorithm understand who this content is for. Like, subscribe, and comment. Okay, do a little like. Make sure that you're subscribed. And even better, write a comment. It can just be, hey there, how you doing? Whatever it is, it helps get the content to other people. Thank you, thank you, thank you.